welcome. In this video, I'll show you how to solve problem 1.8 as it appears in the third edition of Griffith's introduction to quantum mechanics. Now this problem states the following. It says, consider the wave function psi of x comma t is a, some normalization constant, e to the minus lambda, just some constant, times the absolute value of x, times e to the minus i omega, some other constant, times t. Okay, so first of all, we want to normalize the function, then we want to determine the expectation values of x and x squared, and finally, we want to find the standard deviation of x, sketch the graph, and analyze it a little bit. We will get to the details of that very shortly. So first, we need to normalize, as I've said before. You will do this very often, so it is important that you know how to do it well. So normalizing consists in saying, okay, what we have is a probability distribution, that is basically what we can find from the wave function, that is extremely important, right? That is the interpretation of the uh, wave function. So we take the modulus of the wave function squared, and we integrate over the entirety of space. Now the wave function is not always going to be able to reach the entirety of space, as you will see in other examples. But in that case, well, then simply the wave function will be zero at those places. So you will just uh, change the limits of integration. So using this, we get integral from minus infinity to infinity of a squared. Now be very careful. I think I'm actually going to take a, another step to, to be very, very careful here. This thing, right, this is of course dx, this is psi conjugate, psi conjugate times psi dx. Now I'm taking a moment to say it, because that is a very common mistake that people make. There's going to be a lot of cases where your function is real. And if you forget about this, then it doesn't matter. It's not simply about squaring things. Because, well, the limits don't change. Um, we have psi conjugate, which is a e to the minus lambda mod uh, modulus of x, absolute value of x, times e to the plus i omega t, right? We take the conjugate of that. And now we multiply by the wave function, um, but just, you know, regular. So what we get is that the complex exponentials will cancel out. And if you had not noticed this and you had just squared the function, you would still have those factors and you would get something completely different. So these two cancel out and the, those exponents add up. So we get a squared and e to the minus 2 lambda, so e to the minus 2 lambda absolute value of x. Okay, so that is uh, something very important to be wary of. Now, we can simply take the exponent, out, I mean the constant outside, so we get um, minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus 2 lambda absolute value of x dx. Now, how do we integrate this, right? It has an, it has an absolute value that's so difficult. Well, and this is going to be very important. And again, I said this in another video, and I will continue to say this throughout this course, always keep an eye open for, you know, what's going on. We know that the absolute value function is even, right? And this function here is even, you can see it, right? f of x is equal to f of minus x for every single x. So that means that if we sketch this, now I, I'm too lazy to sketch this function, but in, in any even function, right, I'm just going to take a very simple one, let's say something like this, and, and you integrate in a symmetric interval, let's say from minus a to a, then the area here will be the same as here. So the entire, right, integrating over this entire thing is the same as integrating just here and multiplying by 2. And that is exactly what we're going to do. Why? Because that way we can get rid of the absolute value of x, right? We know that the absolute value of x, it depends, right? The absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than zero, uh, x. And the absolute value <clears throat> of x will be minus x if x is smaller than zero. So there's two ways to go about it. What you could do is not use the fact that this is um, is even, and you could just separate the integral, you could say, okay, a squared, and then you go integral from minus infinity to zero, right, because that is this part. And you write e to the minus two lambda times minus x dx, right. So of course, minus minus cancel out. So you end up with minus two lambda x. And then you say, 
plus integral from zero to infinity, right? You are separating uh, the function. It's basically a piecewise function. So you have to do it like this. And then you have e to the minus two lambda x dx. And uh, you can then uh, just calculate this manually. Uh, alternatively, you can use the fact that x, uh, the absolute value of x is even, and you can immediately say uh, a squared. This is now multiplying this integral, which is two times the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus two lambda absolute value of x dx, but the absolute value of x in this domain is simply this. So there we go. You will get the same result in both cases. Now this one uh, means one less integral, so I will do it like this. So we get two a squared, and that integral is e to the minus two lambda x divided by minus two lambda, and we evaluate between zero and infinity. At infinity, the exponent goes to zero, so we only get the second part, so we get minus 1 over minus 2 lambda, so it is positive, so we get 1 over 2 lambda. So in the end, we get that a squared over lambda is equal to 1. So of course, a squared is lambda, and a is the square root of lambda. Okay, that kind of looks like x. There we go. Um, so that is how we... If we integrate this, I just wanted to show you these two different ways of uh, solving this integral because it's always important that you train yourself um, to be able to recognize when a function is even and when it is odd. Okay, so there we go. We just normalized it. Now we want to find the expectation values of x and x squared. Okay, so let's go and do that. So now the expectation value of x, this will be simply the our probability distribution, right, which is a squared e to the minus 2 lambda absolute value of x times x dx. Okay, so that is the first part. And yeah, let's go ahead and solve this. Now, what is this result? We don't even need to worry about it. Why do I say this? Because take a look at this. This is even, this is odd, this is a symmetric interval. So don't even worry about it. You could separate, if you don't notice, what you have to do is separate the integrals just like we did here, except that you will get an x here and an x there. And then you would have to solve that, uh, but that is boring, that is annoying. Instead, you can notice that this is an odd function in a symmetric interval, which means zero. There we go, ready, easy peasy. We didn't have to worry about solving any integral, right? I'm always saying, train yourself to recognize when a function is even and odd. A good indication is always to look at the limits because if the limits are symmetric, then you can see if your function is even or odd and maybe it will help you. But if the limits are not symmetric, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's even or odd, it won't cancel out, so it, you can just forget about it. Okay, so now we need the expectation value of x squared. So the expectation value of x squared, this is simply integral from minus infinity to infinity of a squared e to the minus two lambda absolute value of x, x squared dx. Okay, so um, what do we do here? Now there are several ways to go about it. We could just uh, change the, the limits of integration so we can see, oh, well, this is, and I think that's what we will do because we could separate this integral as we did before, right? So basically the same as this, but now with x squared, right? We could do that and solve those two integrals, um, but that is just annoying. So what I will do instead is say, okay, so this is a symmetric interval. This is an even function. So I have two times the integral from zero to infinity. And that way I am left in this interval where, where I know that x is positive, so I can get rid of the absolute value. And this is now the integral that we need to solve. So it's only one integral instead of two. So how do we solve this? Well, we solve this integral by integration by parts. We have to do it twice. There's a formula that you can use, but I will just show you how to do it um, in the future, you can use uh, the formula once you are sure that you can do the integration manually in case you need it. So we will take u to be x squared and du to be 2x, right? We take this because that way every time we go through this, we are uh, getting uh, smaller and smaller powers of x. 
And then we have dv, which is e to the minus 2 lambda x dx. And v thus is simply e to the minus 2 lambda x over minus 2 lambda. So the integral, our integral will be the product of these two, x squared e to the minus 2 lambda x divided by minus 2 lambda evaluated between 0 and infinity. And now this is the beauty, the beauty of having done this between 0 and infinity, because at infinity, the exponential goes to 0, and at 0, x goes to 0. So that means that this entire thing is 0 in both cases, right? So that is 0. And then we get minus the product of these two. So we get minus 2 divided by minus 2 lambda integral between 0 and infinity of x e to the minus 2 lambda x dx. So we are now in a kind of similar situation as before, but now instead of having x squared, we are at x, right? And this is kind of the point of what we have here. Every single time you go through this, you get one exponent less. And since we are, we are at x squared, we only need to do this twice. But sometimes you will find this expression as x to the sixth, and you have to do it six times. And in those situations, you can derive a formula. And that is what we will do when we come to that. Uh, but in this case, it's whatever. Um, so here, the minus sign and the twos cancel out. So we end up with plus one over lambda. And here we have to once again, use integration by parts. So let's say this time u will be x, du will be dx, and dv will be the same as before. So e to the minus two lambda x dx, and v is e to the minus two lambda x over minus two lambda. So um, we the first part will be the product of these two. So x, so the integral will be x to the uh, e minus 2 lambda x divided by minus 2 lambda, and we evaluate between 0 and infinity. But again, it is 0 at both ends, so we don't worry about it. And then we have minus the product of these two. So we get minus, um, this would be 1 over 2 lambda, and then we integrate, actually minus minus, so we end up with a positive there. And then we have e to the minus 2 lambda x dx and the integral goes from 0 to infinity. So this integral is simply so we get 1 over 2 lambda. And we get e to the minus 2 lambda x divided by minus 2 lambda. And all of this evaluated between 0 and infinity. But at infinity, the exponent goes to 0. So we are only left with the second part. So we get minus this thing. So the minus side cancels out. And we get 4 lambda squared. Okay, so that's the result of this integral. So we can plug it in here. So we get one over four lambda cubed. So one over four lambda cubed. And now let's plug this result back in our original result, which is right here. So this would be one over four lambda cubed. But what was a? A was square root of lambda, so a squared was lambda. So this thing right there, this was lambda. So here we get one over two lambda squared. Okay, so that is the expectation value of x squared. Now next, I believe you want to find the standard deviation, right? So how do we find the standard deviation? Well, that is simply what we use to call sigma. So sigma of x, this is the square root of x squared minus x squared. So in this case, we get the square root of one over two lambda squared, and minus zero. So of course, that part doesn't do much. So we get one over whoops, one over the square root of two times one over lambda. All right, so that is the, um, the uncertainty uh, in x. So now the next part that we want to do, uh, we want to sketch the graph of the probability distribution. Okay, and what was the expression exactly? Maybe let's move this graph around. So what we had, let me maybe get rid of this, was a e to the minus lambda x. Now, we are going to just look at a snippet, right? They said as a function of x, we don't care about how it evolves in time. So 
just graphing this as a function of x, we have this and this. Okay, and now what does it look like? What we have is this exponentially falling function, right? So it falls exponentially at both sides, basically. So it has the peak at x equals zero, and it just falls exponentially. Now, this is not particularly symmetric, <laughs> uh, something like that. Okay, so that is um, basically what the function is going to look like. Now, of course, in our y-axis, this is the probability function, uh, rather our wave function, not the probability, so wave function, and this is x. Okay, and this is, of course, our zero. Now, um, we want to mark the points the expectation value of x plus zero and expectation value, oh, sorry, plus sigma and expectation value of x minus sigma. Now, we found that the expectation value of x was zero. And that, of course, makes sense if you look at this, because you can think of it as basically the average. It's not quite that. Um, but the average position is going to be in this peak, right, because of the distribution that this function has, uh, its symmetry. So if you go to this amount plus sigma, we end up right somewhere over here. This is plus sigma, right? This is sigma and this amount right there is minus sigma. And you can of course uh, go ahead and evaluate the function if you want to find the exact uh, number that this is, right? But you can see that this is basically the amount that tells us how quickly this function spreads and how quickly it opens. And now we want to see the probability that the particle will be found outside of this range. So basically somewhere over here and somewhere over there. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, whenever you want to find the probability of the particle being anywhere in particular, you want to take the probability distribution, but integrate it only in that particular region, right? And since it's already normalized, then you are good to go. So we want to go from sigma all the way to infinity and multiply by two. You could as well, you could also integrate from minus infinity to minus sigma and then add it together with the integral from sigma to infinity, but you are doing twice as much work and I don't like that. A squared, right, our normalization constant times sigma uh, integral from sigma to infinity of e to the minus two lambda, uh, lambda x and dx. Now this integral we have already solved and we also know that a squared is simply lambda. So this will be e to the minus two lambda x divided by minus two lambda. And all of this evaluated between sigma and infinity. So this integral at infinity goes to zero. So we are only left with the second part. The minus signs will cancel out. The twos cancel out, the lambdas cancel out. So we are only left with e to the minus two lambda sigma. But we know, as we saw before, that sigma, that is simply one over the square root of two times lambda. So plugging it in, we get e to the minus two lambda times one over the square root of two lambda. So the lambdas cancel out and we end up with e to the minus two over square root of two. Um, but we can write this as simply the square root of two. Um, just to make the notation a little bit simpler, right? We multiply and divide by the square root of two over two here. And we end up, uh, this here gives us two, which will cancel out this. So that's where it comes from, right? In the end, uh, this and that cancel out and the lambda already canceled out. So you end up with e to the minus square root of two, which is exactly what we have here. So th there we go. That is the probability of finding uh, your uh, your your particle, whatever it is that you're dealing with, right, of uh, finding it outside of the range that we said. And if you want to find any different range, you can just change the limits of integration, of course. And if you go to minus infinity here, of course, you have to get one because the function is normalized. Um, so there we go. That is how you solve this problem. I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe even consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.